But you think about Brandon Miller, maybe not necessarily the Matt Ariza situation, but the Brandon Miller situation. The most important thing of this whole situation is Brandon Miller, dude, you're going to be a top five pick in the NBA draft. Get better friends, dude. What is up, everybody? It is Jake with Master Football back at it again. Happy Thursday. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be up to in all things college football, pro football, Madden, EA College, anything related to American football, hit the red subscribe button. You will not be disappointed. Also hit the like button too, okay? We're, we're close to 1,000 subs on our way. Without further ado, let's get into the video. I am really going to step into it with this video because there's something that happened in the college basketball world connects to something that happened in the college football world that I just... I don't know if we're mature enough as a society to have this conversation, but I'm going to try to do it. Me, Jake Posey in Boise, Idaho, is going to try and change the world. I got to go to the basketball game tonight. But anyways, back to what we're talking about here. This story relates to one of the top teams in the land and one of the top players, a freshman, potentially a top five pick in the 2023 NBA draft, a guy all the way down there in the state of Alabama, Brandon Miller. So Brandon Miller, six foot eight shooting guard from Antioch, Tennessee, had offers from, and again, right here, you see this right here, he's number 14 player in the country, number four shooting small forward, and then uh, number one player in the state of Tennessee, had offers from all SEC schools, and DePaul ultimately decided to go to Alabama, and your boy has not disappointed so far this season. So far, Alabama is the number two team in the country, 23-4, and four. they just went down one spot below Houston, however, remember here, they remember, they're the number uh, two team in the country, seven first place votes, but they beat Houston earlier this year. Now, I know that obviously that not necessarily what you do against somebody head to head doesn't just push you up over a couple of games there. You know, Houston's 25 and two, but Alabama is absolutely on a tear here. And you can see the fact if you look over here on the high end points and high end rebounds, it's a lot of Miller time. Miller is all over the place. Really, really good. I mean, you see Gonzaga 36 against the, you know, Gonzaga. You come down here and check this out. You know, 31 against LSU on January 14th. As a matter of fact, 31 and nine points and rebounds January 4th, or excuse me, January 14th, Saturday. There was a situation that happened early Sunday morning, the night of that Saturday, that we need to talk about because it's really, really serious. So Alabama calls Brandon Miller active member of our team. And again, this is just yesterday. So this for you guys is today, but this is yesterday. Uh, Brandon Miller uh, started Wednesday night at South Carolina, despite Tuscaloosa police testifying a day earlier that the star forward brought a now former teammate, the handgun used to kill a woman in January. And that sentence right there, he brought a now former team with the handgun, used to kill a woman in January. That is true, but there's context around that that's a little murky here. And again, I'm trying to sit the fence here on this one because I want to wait till a jury of my peers decide fate. I don't want the people on Twitter to do it. Uh, but we see here that uh, UA Athletics continues to cooperate fully with the law enforcement in the ongoing investigation of this tragic situation. A mother, a 23-year-old mother of a five-year-old was killed. Uh, based on all the information that we have received, Brandon Miller is not considered a suspect in the case, only a cooperative witness. Today's statement from Brandon's lawyer adds additional context that the university has considered as part of a review of all the facts. Based on all the facts we have gathered, Brandon remains an active member of our team. Tuscaloosa Detective Brandon Culpepper testified Tuesday that Miller brought Darius Miles' gun to him on the night of the shooting of the death of 23-year-old Jamea Janae Harris after Miles asked him to do so via text message. Miles, who has since been removed from the Crimson Tide at Ben's basketball team, and Michael Lynn Davis pays capital punishment charges in the death of Harris, who was shot and killed near campus in the early morning hours of January 15th after, again, 31-9, 40-point win over LSU at home that night. This happens. Miles admitting to providing the gun used in the shooting, according to investigators, but said Davis fired the weapon. Miller was not charged with the crime, and Tuscaloosa Chief Deputy District Attorney Paula Whitley told Alabama.com Tuesday that there's nothing we could charge Miller with. So it's a situation, you know, he had a gun in his car, and the alleged situation, we're going to read more about it later on, the alleged situation, he had a gun in his car, was not touching it, was not aware with it, was already on his way to pick up Miles. Miles texts him, hey, these guys are talking trash, we got to go, give me my piece. They come, he goes over, gets it from him, and then he drops him off, and, and it's really unclear from there. But at the same time, we do know that Miller did not pull the weapon. Miller did, was not really involved much beyond that, but it's the big question here as to whether or not that handoff uh, was intentional, was it not intentional, because we're going to read through Alabama statute law. Again, I'm not a, a lawyer, but I, you can. it's the point that's going to be brought up in court if this ever were to escalate for Brandon Miller. 
And it says right here, Jim Standridge, one of the attorneys representing Miller, released a statement early Wednesday reiterating some of those points in an attempt to provide additional facts on Brandon's behalf in response to the misstatements in reporting yesterday regarding Brandon. So here is the press release that was they were talking about here. And it says here on January 14th, he played in a basketball game. Uh, he, he was asked by Darius Miles for a ride to the strip area to go to a nightclub. Now, remember, he was already on his way over to his friend's house. Mr. Miles brought his handgun and left it in the back of Brandon's car. Brandon never saw the handgun nor handle it. Further, it is our understanding that the weapon was concealed under some clothing in the backseat of his car. Brandon did not go inside the nightclub. Instead, he left and went to the restaurant to eat. At approximately midnight, Mr. Miles began asking Brandon to come pick him up so that they could leave and go to another location and join friends. Brandon advised that he would be along later, and approximately one hour later, Brandon began to leave the restaurant to pick up Mr. Miles, but first had to give another companion a ride home. Before Brandon asked, Brandon arrived to pick up Mr. Miles. Mr. Miles and the individual, Mrs. Harris, apparently exchanged words. Without Brandon knowing any of this context, and as Brandon was already on his way to pick up Mr. Miles, Mr. Miles texted Brandon and asked him to bring him his firearm. We actually have a picture of that tweet here. It says right here, uh, I need my joint, a blank, uh, uh, right now, or uh, uh, just got a faking. He says, uh, he says, they're faking, which means they're threatened, right? That's basically what they're saying. Yeah, I looked up Urban Dictionary. So he says, these guys are talking trash. Bring me my gun is what he said. Brandon subsequently arrived at the scene to pick up Mr. Miles. Brandon never got out of his vehicle or interacted with anyone in Ms. Harris' party. He was never involved in a verbal altercation with Cedric Johnson or Mr. Davis. Brandon never touched the gun and was not involved in this exchange to Mr. Davis in any way. And it never knew that illegal activity incurred, uh, involving the gun would occur. Brandon did not block the Jeep driven by Mr. Johnson. In fact, Brandon had already parked on Gray Street when the Jeep pulled up behind him. The street was never blocked by Brandon's vehicle. Gunfire erupted shortly after the Jeep arrived and Brandon's vehicle was struck by bullets fired from one of the guns. Brandon quickly left the area when the gunfire erupted. As soon as he was notified that someone had been injured and the police wished to speak with him, he was fully cooperated with law enforcement's investigation. All of the events described are clearly captured on video. There is no dispute about Brandon's activities during this evening. Jim Standridge, uh, Crown over in Standridge, LLC, attorney for Brandon Miller at Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So that's the situation here. Brandon Miller, and I'm a, I have a statement at the end here that I want to talk about this, but we're, we're going to talk about this right now for first. First thing I want to talk about is the fact that, again, awkward situation. He had the gun. It was brought over. Somebody took the gun, and then that person gave the gun to, some, gun to somebody else, and then the gun was used to kill a mother, uh, a 23-year-old mother of a five-year-old. So... It's a really complex situation. You're talking about the number one player on the, on the top, number two team, top five pick, Alabama, big time sports and community. And it, you're like, well, why didn't this come out? What was going on here? Was there some tomfoolery? Were they trying to hide it? Was the Alabama people trying to protect him? There's lots of weird situations along with that. But I do know that, and again, I, I know I have some tweets I want to bring up here because they are a little inflammatory. But man, you can see just from the the toxic levels of fandom out there. I mean, fan is short for fanatic and you're totally going to see it in a couple of these tweets and messages. So Clay Travis, very controversial uh, perspective, or at least not controversial, but we're just going to say outspoken. Um, definitely out here basically saying that, you know, he was under the impression that it was brought to him and he's, he's an accessory in some way to the murder. And again, how much there's, there's one, a couple words in here. We're going to look through the definitions of murder here to kind of see that, but we see the fact that, <sighs> He basically had to say, why, why, why is he playing what's going on here? This is a weird situation. And Alabama fans uh, have been on here basically telling him, why are you such a little B? Is this how your parents raised you? How does it feel when you watch other guys bang your wife beta male? Uh, very, very mature response by this guy right here. Um, now, what he could have said is, hey, can we wait till all of the evidence comes out? Can we see what's going on here before we start to indict people? Can we not have you know, social media trials? But what came out was, was, was that. We also have our boy Ethan here. Is this, why don't you just admit you were wrong instead of being a stubborn dumbass? Why are you such a bitch? Uh, seeing you take the cancel culture leftist approach is definitely something I didn't expect to see from you today. Again, so I actually, the first message was not 100% incorrect because he's trying to refer to the facts. And I remember here, this is the problem we have to remember here. We don't know all the facts yet, okay? I don't I'd run a... Uh, the lawyer for Brandon Miller is, of course, going to stand up for his can for his client. Of course, he's going to do that. Is that the official record? I'm not 100% sure. He said he caught it on video. We'll see. But I do know that you can see how these just deteriorate into fandom, where it's one of those things where life is bigger than sports. But, man, for people, some people out there, 
Not much. Life is not much bigger than sports. I also want to check out the Alabama code. And again, I, I'm, I tentative, I'm an HR, so I tentatively read a lot of these, these laws. I have to try to interpret this stuff. And they leave the language very vague, which gives them some flexibility on how to charge people. The thing about this is that actually, I don't think it actually reaches the level of manslaughter. Because manslaughter, here's the definition. A person commits the crime of manslaughter if he she causes the death of another person under circumstances that will constitute murder, except that he she causes the death due to a sudden heat of passion caused by the provocation recognized by law and before a reasonable amount of time of passion to cool for the reason to reassert itself. So the big question here for that, it would be manslaughter if he knew the guy said, oh, hey, man, this, this person's talking trash, bringing my gun. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes and brings him in the gun. From what we understand now, the text message was sent to Brandon while he was in the car already on his way. So it wasn't a situation where he, he went out of his way to go grab that and bring it to him. Now for murder, it gets a little more interesting. It sounds weird because it actually manslaughter doesn't sound like it's more relevant. But if you talk about the murder code here, it says right here, the person commits murder if he or she commits or attempts to commit uh, anything like this in terms of any other felony, clearly dangerous of two human life. And in the course of, in the furtherance of the crime that he or she is committing or attempting to commit or an immediate uh, flight there, there from he, she, or another participant, if there be any cause the death of any person. In the course of and in the furtherance of the crime causes the death of any person. That is the part where, did he assist? I don't really know. And I wanted to bring this back to the Matt Ariza situation. For anybody who doesn't know the Matt Ariza situation, okay? Number one punter, you know, uh, the, the uh, Ray Guy Award winner, one of the best punters in the country in the year 2021. Awesome San Diego State. I play in the Mountain West. Really, really good player. Really, really good punter. Gets drafted sixth round, 180th overall to the Buffalo Bills. And then you come down here and you see the timeline. So here's what the timeline says. So he, uh, he was drafted, like I said, third punter drafted. And then on August 26th, uh, during the final preseason game, he did not dress because a lawsuit came out of him accusing him and two former SDSU teammates of uh, sexual assault, is what we're going to say. He was released the next day on August 27th. And then he's coming down here and say, uh, later on, the San Diego District Attorney's Office did not file criminal charges against Arizo or the two other teammates, stating that the prosecutors did not see or decided that there is no path to a potential criminal conviction. So that's the weird spot here. And he, this is the big question we need to ask here. If somebody gets accused of a crime and they're on a sport team, this or that, blah, 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 whatever the situation is, do you remove them preemptively? What do you do there? Do you assume that they're right? Are accusations, accusations correct? I know myself, I'm a constitutionalist. You should not be a, convicted of a crime until you are proven by a majority of your peers. That's the way I operate. However, I can understand that we're like, Matt Ariza didn't get criminally convicted. The charges were dropped. There's nothing going on. He's not charged with anything. He gets punished for it. He could potentially actually go after the bills for that in certain instances. I don't know what New York law is, but man, this same situation, Brandon Miller, he's at least involved. The, the case is still ongoing. We haven't really decided exactly all the details here. There's a lot we're going to uncover. Uh, and I know I sound like a, a complete fence setter here, but I am a complete fence setter, okay? I'm going to sit on the fence until the jury decides what it is, okay? I have no qualms about saying that. I'm not going to let my fandom get in the way of my decision. But you think about Brandon Miller, maybe not necessarily the Matt Ariza situation, but the Brandon Miller situation. The most important thing of this whole situation is, Brandon Miller, dude, you're going to be a top five pick in the NBA draft. Get better friends, dude. All right, this is a complex one. Get in the comments. Tell me what you guys think is going on. Remember here, we don't have a conviction yet. It's only an accusation. But if that's all it takes for you, you let me know right now. Get in the comments and let me know. But beyond that, guys, that's enough, that's enough stuff today. I'm going to go watch a basketball game. I am out.